I want to talk to you now about something that is a huge part of the problem. And that huge part of the problem is straw purchases. It's people who are able to buy guns legally purchasing those guns and then turning around and selling them to those who cannot buy them, to people who have felonies or who otherwise are not permitted. Simply put, they are very often selling them to criminals. Because who else with a significant criminal record is so eager to get a hold of a gun? Our CARES team responded to 11 families over the last week giving advocacy, support, referral services to gun violence victims. And one of the reasons they had to do it is because some people think it's okay to just keep buying guns legally and selling them illegally. They think they're going to get away with it. Well, no, you're not. If you think the way to dig up a little extra holiday money is to buy a gun for X and sell it for more than X, no, you're not. And we are here to talk about exactly how, if you engage in that kind of behavior, just like Tyrone Patterson, you're going to get taken down. And you're not just going to end up prosecuted. You're not just going to end up convicted. You are going to end up permanently marked with a felony, losing your job, doing jail time, being separated from your family. And that's exactly what you should get, simply put. Because what you are doing by being an arms merchant, what you are doing by selling weapons to people who are members of groups and gangs that are actively killing each other and are often accidentally killing bystanders, what you are doing is every bit as bad as what they are doing. I want to highlight that there has been a very long-standing, very positive collaboration between the AG's office and the DA's office with its gun violence task force. We will have remarks in a moment from Bill Fritzy, who works with the DA's offices and is the chief of our gun violence task force. We give the lawyers, the AG's office gives the agents. And they, it works that way partly because the agents can roam. They can be in Philly, but they can also be outside of Philly at the gun show in Oaks, or they can be in other counties because they are statewide. But it is a close collaboration. It's a very <coughs> capable collaboration. And it's done with people such as Pat Mangold, who is an agent in charge of many other agents there who are very, very familiar with Philadelphia. Pat Mangold was actually a Philadelphia police officer, a Philadelphia homicide detective for many years before he went to the AG's office, someone I personally have known for 25 years, if not longer. Uh, in a moment, I'm going to ask ADA Bill Fritzy to provide an overview of this investigation, the arrest, and the charges of Mr. Patterson. But I think it's important to understand the nuts and bolts of how this works and how this happens. Greetings to Councilmember Squilla. Thank you for being able to be with us here today, Councilmember. We truly appreciate it. And we will ask you in a little bit if you have any remarks. You'll be welcome. Don't have to, but you'll be welcome to provide them. Uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Fritzy to come up and explain the case. After that, I'm going to take the opportunity to read a statement from A.G. Shapiro, which has been provided. I will read that on his behalf. And then I look forward to getting comments from Representative Fiedler and Representative, uh, excuse me, Representative Fiedler and Councilmember uh, Mark Squilla before we move on for some final remarks with Bishop Robinson and then any questions you may have that are for any of the people here, including, uh, including our Chief of Homicide, if there are questions about specific cases. But let me start by calling forward ADA Bill Fritzy, who will speak about the Tyrone Patterson case. Mr. Fritzy. Good morning. On April uh, 15th, 2021, this year, uh, agents from the Attorney General's office, as well as state and federal partners, executed arrest warrants in relation to the grand jury investigation into South Philadelphia uh, gang violence. At that time, at one of the residents of Hanif Wilkins, who was arrested in connection to homicide, a homicide agents recovered a semi-automatic pistol. As a result of that investigation into the pistol, um, it came back to a buyer by the name of Tyrone Patterson. Uh, using the Pennsylvania system of instant checks, they were able to determine that Mr. Patterson had bought multiple firearms around March 19th of 2021. As a result, uh, during that investigation, those fire other two firearms uh, that he had purchased that we're aware of uh, were also recovered. All three firearms were recovered from individuals who are ineligible 
are not allowed to carry because of their felony convictions. Uh, on uh, just this last week, Mr. Patterson was arrested while at work. Mr. Patterson admitted to the purchase of those firearms. He admitted to understanding that those firearms were being passed around on city streets and knew the individuals that he had been passing them around to. As agents were about to arrest Mr. Patterson, he also informed them that he had a three-year-old child that he had left at home while he worked his overnight shift. So the agents then rushed to the home of that child, uh, recovered the child from the home, found that the smoke alarm had been covered and the stove had been left on to keep the child warm at night. Mr. Uh, Patterson is now facing multiple charges of firearms, uh, illegal firearms sales, as well as endangering the welfare of a child being held on $1.5 million bail, uh, and he will be awaiting a preliminary hearing next week. Thank you for that. Uh, obviously, Mr. Fritzy will be available for further questions. On behalf of Attorney General Josh Shapiro, I would like to read the following statement, which I think does capture a lot of the significance of what's occurring here today. Uh, A.G. Shapiro states, and this is a quote, Purchasing a gun for someone who isn't legally able to carry one is a crime that leads to shootings and murders, which is what occurred in this case. All three weapons straw purchased by Mr. Patterson went directly into the hands of violent criminals, including a member of the 31st Street gang charged with murder. Thanks to our track and trace initiative, the electronic record of sale from the gun store was immediately available and helped us find the straw purchaser and other crime guns. People need to know. Our gun violence task force is working overtime to follow up on these leads and hold, holding straw purchasers accountable to the fullest extent of the law, unquote. 